Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter game review. Today's game up on the table, we have... Pelta Games gives us Pelta Peeps. And Pelta Peeps is for two to six players with a two and three slight variant where you play with additional sets. We'll explain that in a moment. The game's roughly 15 minutes per set of uh, colors in the game, as well as ages mm, eight and up roughly, and takes you know, roughly anywhere from, I guess, 30 minutes to about an hour and a half to play, depending on how many about sets that. you have. And you play the game by placing your little Pelta Peeps and Pelta Dragons into interlocking squares to try and score points. Alright, so let's go ahead and check out the game. Alright guys, so here we have the setup for the beginning of the game of Pelta Peeps. Now, depending on the amount of players you're going to be playing with is depending on how many Peeps you're going to be using. Now, as you see, there's six sets of Peeps here. You've got white and yellow, green, blue, red, and the gray color. And if you're playing with two players, that means you're going to have two sets of peeps per player. So maybe somebody would take the blue and the white, and somebody might take the yellow and the green. And you would set these aside. If you're playing with three, there's an even special variant for this one, you have three players, each would have their own set of two peeps, so you would use all of them. In four players, you would have four, and in five, you would have five, and six, everybody would get their own, so six. And that's basically the idea between uh, how you set up the different variants for the different amount of players. Uh, kinds of peeps that are on the board, you notice the regular ones with eyes, those are actually the awake Pelta peeps. These are more points. There's also the sleeping peeps, there's one each with a universal connector. And there are the Pelta dragon eggs, these are the ones with the scales. These are one point each and they have the blank eyes. Now start a turn, each player must pick a peep and place it on the board. Now something to keep in mind, for the first three rounds, each player must pick a peep that has at least two connectors or interfaces. After you've gone ahead and selected your piece and placed it down on the board, your next action is simple. You can either move somebody else's peep or you can flip somebody else's peep. You can never move or flip your own peep, and you must, and if you want to, you can move or flip somebody else's peep. Now moving is very, very specific. You pick up a peep and you take it off of its connections and move it anywhere else on the board. You can't flip it, you do one or the other. Now, if you move a peep, you can't have them, you can't have two separate um, peeps. They have to be all be connected by the time that the peep has been removed and placed somewhere else. And flipping a peep is very simple as well. You simply take it and turn it over onto its backside, negating points from that specific peep, and I'll explain that in a little bit more, and then making sure the connectors still connect as they're supposed to after flipping it. Now let's go ahead and show them how to connect and switch and move peeps. All right guys, so here we have an example of a six player game of Pelta Peeps. And we've already had white, yellow, green, tan, and red go ahead and go. So now it is Blue's turn, and Blue's gonna show you how it works and how he's gonna place his piece and then flip a character. First things first, place your piece. Slide those right in there. And then going to flip red, face down to negate those points. Done. Okay, so he's played his Pelta Peep and flipped Red's Pelta Peep because you can never flip your own or move your own pieces. And now it is going to go ahead and be White's turn. White is going to go ahead and place in the connecting joint. And he's also going to move Red. Poor Red is just being moved around and placed right there. And that is the two different things you can do in the game. Place and then move or flip. Now something to keep in mind when you're moving, you never want the pieces to be separate into two separate groups when you're moving. If at any point, if you can disconnect, even if you're reconnecting somewhere else to rejoin the separate groups, if at any point in time they are two separate entities, you cannot disconnect. You have to actually move it somewhere else. And also when you're flipping, the connection pieces still have to be able to connect. If they don't when you flip it, that's an illegal move. It only works if you're connecting arrows to arrows or Y connectors to Y connectors or flipping it to make sure that it stays connected in some way. Otherwise, that, that doesn't work as well. Now, play ends when one player places their last piece or when a player can no longer place a piece legally on the board. After that happens, then the scoring phase begins, and we'll go ahead and show you how the scoring phase works down here. Okay, so let me show you how to score Pelta Peeps. Now, the first thing you need to know is that Pelta Peeps are scored when they're facing upwards. And you have two different Pelta Peeps with different scores. You've got the dragons, which are worth one if they're face up, and you've got the regular ones if they're worth two when they're face up. Any Pelta Peep that is face down is worth zero. Additionally, if you have pieces that are in, in, going into you or you are going outwards, you get a point for each one of those. You also get a bonus point if ever your color, like blue here, is connected into you. So for instance, white, he, she, he is going to score one, two, 
three for each connecting piece. He's also going to score two points for his basic Pelta Peep. One, two here, and one here with a total of eight points. Next up would be yellow. And yellow starting at this side gets two points for his basic Peep and another point for connecting, so we're at three, four, five, six, seven on connectors. 8, 9 for the face up, and 10, this does count as a connection, 11 for these last two connectors. Next we have green, and green has 1 with 2 here. He also has 1 point there, and 1 point here with a bonus as well. And this piece out is 1, as well as 1 here and another bonus with green at 11. Next up is gray. Gray is going to have 1, 2 for the face up, 3, Next piece, four, five, six. Now there's two point bonus here because this is gray to gray. And gray has this last face up over here, face up as a dragon peep, connecting to the red. Gray's total comes to 10. Then you've got red. Red has got one point here, two, three, four, and then this one, five, six, and seven, eight, and nine points. And lastly, we have blue. Blue looks like the big winner on the board right now. Has one point for the dragon point, or dragon peep face up. Two points for the connector. Next piece, two points for a connector, one point for a connector, two points for a connector. Next piece, again, another two points, and then three for his other connectors. Now these might have been face down, but even as face down, you still get your bonus points for connecting your own colors to your own colors. So blue adds up to 13. And totaling with blue at 13, and yellow and green in second place at 11. Gray is at 10, red is at nine, and white is at eight. So as you can see, the game comes down really close in scoring. Now, of course, we didn't actually finish the game because it would have taken up almost the entire table to play a six player game, and we've had to place all the peeps down. So this is just an example of how to score the points and how to play Pelta Peeps. All right, guys, so Pelta Peeps is a very interesting little game of strategy and take that, as well as placement. Your objective in the game is to simply screw over your opponent and try and better yourself as the best you can. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk about strategy of the game. What do you think? Uh, I think early on, you definitely want to play as many pieces as you can that have many connectors to give yourself the best chance when your turn comes back around to reconnect to your own pieces, because that's one of the biggest ways that you can score. I also, once you have the chance, recommend playing you're blocking pieces like this to then lock up your opponent's connectors and you don't really mind early on losing a few pieces that are going to obviously be flipped because you're just trying to lock up what their options are. Something else to hold on to until later is also your sleeping peep. And this connects just the same as it would you know, to anything else with a round connector because it's just a flat one, just like you would see the other connectors. And this is a good last play kind of piece because you can play this pretty much anywhere. Yeah, you definitely want to hold on to these pelta, these sleeping pelta peeps because they're definitely going to be needed late game. And you might be end up with, you're going to probably be ending up with a couple extra pieces left over, especially if you don't play as mm, smartly or yeah. you know, as smart as you can. Yeah. yeah. And this one here, yeah, these guys are definitely ones you want to lock up your opponent's stuff with. If they play something, these are when you want to use these guys. These big connectors you want to save as long as you possibly can. Although, foregoing the fact that you have to play them these types. Well, it the gives first you three. a lot of opportunity to really connect your own pieces. Though. Yeah. And replayability of the game, oh, there's tons. There's tons and tons because you can, it's, it's never going to be the same game, ever. Like, you're always going to have somebody. Oh, yeah, doing everybody can play different pieces. I mean, honestly, the, you know, the colors are going to be mixed matched all over the place, and no one's going to play the same order of pieces. It's, it's a new game every time. Yeah, that and two players and four, three players where you're playing with two oh, sets totally each. Totally different strategies. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That totally changed the game for us. Yeah. Um, and it works. It works for two players. It works for three, four, five, six. I mean, I think four, or sorry, three and six is a pretty long game, though. Yeah. You can get with pretty a lot of long. To play. So if you don't mind a longer strategic game, then that's okay. But if you're playing with two, four, and five, it's generally going to be a little less time. Mm -hmm. um, the quality of the components, what do you think? Oh, these are really nice. Uh, they're nice laser cut wood. Like, it smells nice. It feels nice. There's no rough edges. Uh, even if you take the rounded piece and you're not sure you know, where you're going to connect that, if you're connecting it um, just to see how well it connects to the, or how smoothly it connects to the rounded edges of something that's cut on the inside, it literally does not even catch on any of the edges there. It smoothly rolls all around. It's laser, a nice cut. Laser cutting is even yeah, great these solid. days. And also, this is a prototype. These guys are not the final product. They're going to have better quality wood in the, if, if the Kickstarter funds are going to have better quality wood for these guys. Much 
much better design, much much nicer wood, stronger. I mean, they're already I can only amazing. Imagine how good it would get. Yeah, they're already yeah. they're already really good as it is. Uh, the level of difficulty. So the game, you could play with little kids. I think you could. It's definitely a game that you could play. With, you wouldn't be as strong with them, but you could still play. Definitely. It, but, so you yeah. have that where you're playing with older people. If you maybe me, us our age. 30 and up, where there's going to be a lot of strategy, a lot of time taken in deciding like, what pieces. Yeah. But also, you could take it to your youth group, and you know people just start playing pieces back and forth, back and forth. Mm -hmm. The only thing different with the, the difficulty of understanding the game would probably be the scoring for the little kids, younger kids. It's quite a bit of counting, especially yeah. if you're playing four or five player game. They might need some help. It's going to need a little bit of help. But otherwise, it's solid for pretty much everybody to I play agree. the game. definitely. And, um, Good family game. Yeah, yeah. Overall, what do you think? Um, I love this game. I really had a lot of fun with it. And yeah, you can use it with friends, you can use it social situations, family gatherings, all kinds of stuff. Now, I don't know what they're going to put the game in, if it's going to be a box or a bag or whatever. But honestly, you could literally probably fit all these pieces in a bag. And like little oh, yeah. baggies and just fit them in a bag and yeah, carry them around somewhere. Oh, yeah. it's, you, know, it's in, you can play this pretty much anywhere as long as you have a smaller flat surface. Now, of course, mm -hmm. with bigger games, like I said, you're going to need some more room. You're going to need a lot more room. There, yeah. There's a lot of pieces involved for a six player. And I don't know exactly how the Kickstarter is going to work it, but I think you get you can start with a two player, but you can also upgrade Expand. and buy buy the f three, four, five, and six player variants. My favorite style of play would probably be four players. It, it hits the niche right there with four mm, players. Good timing too. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, and that's also the same time length as a two player game. Realistically. Yeah. For how many pieces are being played? Yeah, yep. definitely. And so that's what we think about Pelt the Peeps. What out of ten? If you were to give it a rating out of ten, I'd probably give it a solid eight. Eight. I think I would rate it as an 8 as well, right on the same mark as you. Cool. I give it my Unfiltered Gamer stamp of approval. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter game review. If you like this video and like to see more, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Also be sure to check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. You can check out our blogs, our giveaways, and our giant Kickstarter list of all of our current games for this month. And if you like that content, don't forget to also check out our affiliate websites, everythingboardgames.com and thegiveawaygeek.com. All right? Thanks for watching. See Catch you next time. time.